So Dave, thanks for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks yeah, for having Med me. Tech conference. Up here. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So you know, get to highlight the people who are making a difference in MedTech. You know, it, for too long the, the industry's not celebrated the workers and the great leaders, uh, you know, like yourself. And uh, those who don't know you, you head up uh, Siemens. Yes. The Americas. Have, uh, I'm president of Siemens Medical Solutions, Inc. And I'm the head of the Americas for Siemens Health and Ears. Yeah. Um, and, and most recently, I know it's still in the works, so we can't talk about it a lot, but yeah. it's been in the public domain, is the uh, Corindus acquisition. Yes, we're excited about that. To your point, uh, the deal's not closed yet, but we're excited, uh, and we made that announcement about a month ago, or a little bit longer than that now, and uh, really excited about the opportunity and the space that we're about to get into. Yeah, and, and, and that's a really, I think that's a watershed moment on these large players who have been from the outside looking in, meaning, large capex diagnostic equipment primarily, and usually you have the companies that are in the body and the companies that are outside of the body. Yeah. So like, you know, the Boston size or, you know, the, the Edwards and the Abbotts who have always been interventional, yeah. and then you got the Siemens and the other players, now they've crossed over, and that's a really interesting spot now. Yes, and you know, I come from the interventional space. I, I was there a very long time going all the way back to Guidant, way back at 1995. Right and then at Abbott, so uh, near and dear to my heart, that space, no pun intended. Um, and uh, look, we're so close to the procedures today. Just think, everything that requires imaging. So it makes sense that we get closer and closer to it, right? And I think you believe you've seen Philips do it already, and kudos to them, and uh, it just makes a lot of sense to get closer to the procedure. We have a great partnership with Boston Scientific, and um, that's yielded uh, great dividends for both companies, and, it, and I think it gets us even closer to that space. So, obviously you've been in that CapEx space, and we won't call it robotics, but let's call it digital surgery, or digital health. And very large platform Siemens has, great footprint, great organization. What, what, what do you see that platform? What's occurring over the next few years that you're going to be watching closely as you lead this type of company? Well, first of all, I think you know what we're looking to do is improve outcomes. Um, I think the idea of automating procedures is really important. Um, today, with our own imaging equipment, we can actually operate things remotely. Uh, we have a new technology called the virtual cockpit. We can run our MRs and CTs remotely, maybe down the road, other technology, other modalities remotely, not there yet, but maybe down the road. Um, and the concept of, first of all, automating procedures, improving outcomes, be able to do things from a remote standpoint. Just think about where this, the condition some of these patients are and the time to get them to a hospital. Um, you're fighting time, all, always, right? The, regardless, stroke, cardiac, you know, could be a major trauma. And be able to do things more remotely is a huge benefit, especially in rural places. And look, our country, despite the big cities and everything, is still very rural and then outside the U.S. Yeah. And it's another predicament. And you may not have as many physicians in certain areas. You know, there may be a ton of cardiologists, but there might not be a ton of guys and girls out there doing uh, stroke treatment. Yeah. And therefore, there's only regional stroke centers. So that concept maybe down the road, potentially, of doing things remotely just makes a ton of sense. And always with the idea of improving an outcome. Sure. Sure. And, and what's interesting too is, you know, time equals heart and brain in the, in, in, when it comes to heart attacks and stroke and having that ability to bridge that time equals distance too. Yep. So that interventional move with Corindus potentially is very, is, I think it's very telling on where things are going. I think 5G opens that up. I don't think there's as much of a latency issue with the imaging and diagnostic, is it? No, no, not at all. Right? Yeah, and, and again, uh, we have a great example in uh, Brazil. Um, I actually had a chance to visit and where we're running uh, over 50 plus MRIs from one center, from one virtually one office, think of it that way. And the challenge in Brazil is, unfortunately for Brazil, there's not a lot of MRI techs in Brazil, and they're very costly. So the concept of having a healthcare professional maybe at the table, mm -hmm. so to speak, um, and putting the, the patient on the table, but not necessarily a certified MRI tech, is really a, a tremendous benefit. And there's someone sitting in basically a cockpit running these MRIs all around Brazil. Um, we got that technology again called the virtual cockpit approved in the US and, and we're, we're not in the site yet, but we hope to be very soon. 
and we're really excited about it and the potential there. So does the organization think through workflow now? So some people are afraid that some of this digital is going to displace jobs. And I think what it does is actually creates jobs. It does, displaces the jobs that aren't useful anymore. So when you, when you mention whether it's a, a, a neurology, cardiology, MRI tech, so now what we're going to do is start to have work teams, maybe not the surgeon or the specialist, but we'll have trained work teams that can facilitate that cockpit from a distance. Yes, and we're always thinking about workflow, first of all, yeah. and again, it's not with the intent of replacing FTEs, but I think it's about taking the FTE and put them where they're most needed, right, and making the whole system more productive. I mean, in, in radiology as an example, and we're the leaders in radiology, we're very focused on productivity. I mean, there's so much emphasis on that at a hospital level. So anything we can do to improve the throughput is really important. And again, always remember, with and also a good, really good outcome, but moving these people around so they can be focused on the right job is critically important. If we could do some of the more mundane things uh, with, through automation and other, you know, um, artificial intelligence as an example will help us in that area too, that's really important. Is, is Siemens looking also at cloud technology? So a lot of people talk about cloud, and that's a core competency in itself. You know, it's almost like trying to own the utility. Yeah. And, and that's between cybersecurity and you know, connectivity and patient records and all the legal. And there are organizations now starting to come out just to offer that utility to med tech. What are your thoughts on that space in general? Well, I think everybody looks at it differently. We, we, we obviously need to have some type of cloud technology for the equipment we have. And we have cloud-based technology to help us with the servicing and the running of our MRIs and CTs and uh, molecular imaging equipment. It's called SceneFly. It's a cloud-based system, like a dashboard type system. And, I think everybody's racing towards having more capabilities with cloud so you can do even more of a, uh, a command center uh, type of setup, right? You're seeing more hospitals going in that direction and it's all only enabled through a cloud, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we're not in the EMR space, so to speak, but uh, there is a reason to have cloud-based technology, um, connectivity of our systems and also to help run them more efficiently. So let's slide over to you personally and, and, and love your insight and opinion on this. So to your point, you came out of the interventional world. Guidant, I've been out this for 30 years, I think one of the best medical device companies of all yeah, time. Great group of people. The rock really stars was. who came out of Guidant yeah. back in the day. And then you went over to Abbott, yep. interventional business, yep. right? My, you were on the mitral clip side? Yeah, I was on the stent side and then the mitral clip side, yes. And then you walk into a large CapEx player. Yeah. Did, did people question your ability to move over from that interventional device world to this CapEx build out? And you rocked it over there. Yeah. You know, that's a great question. I'm sure people raise an eyebrow. It's, it's not, you know, uh, I think every company has a culture and if you don't come from that culture, there's always a question. I mean, me, I'm personally, I'm a big believer in bringing in outside talent. I've done a lot of that at Siemens uh, today, but I think when I got there, the team was probably, I wonder what this person can bring to us. Uh, I think I've answered those questions and we have a great team. We've made a lot of changes. Um, we made a lot of changes for the right reason, bring the right talent in. Uh, people that are change agents are really focused on winning and driving the business. And really what I'm most proud of with our team is we have this amazing entrepreneurial spirit. I mean, it's so cool to see. And we're doing amazing things with our customers. Uh, I, I, mean, I shared with you, we had a phone call, I shared with you about the deal we did at the uh, uh, MUSC in South Carolina and University of Missouri just recently. And there's these long-term partnerships. We're really excited about how we're collaborating with institutions. And it's only because of the team and their ability to think much differently than we did before. The days of, let me, hand, let me deliver you an MRI or a CT, those days are over. It's about helping institutions address solutions, you know, or problems with our solutions. So as you roadmap that out, and it wasn't too long ago that we're just like, look, look how good this image is. Yes. Right, and now, now you're involved in the entire continuum. Yes. Without playing too much of the strategy book, what, what, what do you look at as you move forward and bring the value to the customers in that space? Well, first of all, it takes a real collaboration. I mean, it takes for the hospital to be comfortable with saying, here's our pain points, and can you help us or not? And we have to be honest and say, yes, we can, or no, we can't, right? We've got to be really careful about that. Because, you know, not everybody can do everything. Or we can find a partner, maybe, that can help us. So, um, 
we have a lot of dialogue and we do a lot of due diligence with another. If, they, if a hospital gives us a pain point or two that we focus on. At MUSC in South Carolina, one of the pain points was reducing uh, the time to intervention with their stroke patients. And uh, we thought, you know, after inspecting it and looking at what they're doing, and we're not the clinical experts, they are, but we thought from an operational standpoint, we could really help them. So taking the goal, whatever their time was then, to re uh, dramatically reducing that time over a year or two time period is one of our focus areas there. Um, and we thought we can help them. And then we're working on other innovation projects with them, as well as even help them with the development of their children's hospital, the Sean Jenkins Children's Hospital that I just announced and just opened. So uh, uh, there's a great leadership team at Medical University of South Carolina. We get along really well with those folks and they've been great partners to collaborate with. But I mean, uh, that's how we do it. I mean, we really sort of dig in, we roll up our sleeves, we spend weeks there and we don't talk about the image and we're not talking about our laboratory tests. We're, what we're really talking about is where are your pain point and let's see if we can help you. And we got a really smart group of people that come in and see what they can do to help out. And that's, that's a culture you build there, right? That's yeah. a mindset. Yes. And so a, people will look at a CapEx mindset one way and then an interventional mindset another way. Different sales forces, yes. different approaches, but the overlay still is look at problem solving. You're going to have to integrate, and again, I don't know the details, an interventional space, right? So Boston Sci is a partner with Corindis, is with you, and that's an interesting play. And you come out of that interventional world. What, what will be your first one or two moves as you try and integrate those two different mindsets and those two different approaches to sales? Yeah, well I think from a commercial standpoint, um, number one, it's about people and it's really important when we bring in the talent that understands that space. Like, you know, I came in, I brought in people who've come from that space already, regardless of uh, recent acquisitions and even regardless of the Boston Scientific people, uh, team, a partnership. We've actually brought in people like that anyway, just to shape the mindset in the interventional space we're already in. Remember, we sell the cath labs that are used to do those procedures and we, we need to bring in a mindset of people who think that way. Um, we have a great imaging sales force. It's a, a very proud one and, and people know the team really well. But just think about, you know, I was thinking about, about my days about being a sales rep and I only worked in the interventional cath lab. Our sales reps today work the whole hospital. I was thinking, man, it's a hard job. You know, they go from neurology to urology to cardiology, radio, all over the place. They are experts. So sometimes they need some help, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why we're bringing in more people with an interventional focus to help them um, in some of these other, I would call it specialty areas. Hey, we may be bringing, bringing people in for orthopedics too, right, down the road. We do, we do some things with orthopedic companies as well. Um, we obviously see as some of these growth areas being, you know, the things that you see as growth areas, spine surgery, cardiology, neurology, right? And we're very interested in those areas from a diagnostic perspective, but also how do we get closer to those fields? Yeah, and, and, and you bring up a great point is you're touching all of those stakeholders in hospitals, neuro, cardio, right, peripheral, ortho. Absolutely. And, and, and most of the time it's diagnostic first. Yes. Right? Even if it's an emergency, it's diagnostic first. So you become the gateway. And when you own the front door, you potentially could own the pathway through. Yeah. So I think that those who are listening to this should keep their eye on those who have those multiple touch points in that healthcare continuum, because once you have that doorway, and once companies like Siemens, like you said, Philips, start to get into that interventional world, yeah. man, you start to come at it from both sides. Well, just think of it this way. You know, often when I talk to uh, hospital administrators, I talk to them a lot about this. A patient shows up at a hospital with chest pain. Okay, what's the first thing they do? You know, they might do a quick ultrasound, all right? Well, we're there for that. Then they say, let's get some blood work. Well, we're also there for that, right? You know, high sensitivity troponin, uh, we make all the laboratory tests, we make point of care testing. Ooh, bells and whistles go off, let's send them to CT. Well, we're there there as well. And then ultimately, they may say, you know what, we're going to take this patient to the cath lab. Well, we make the cath lab, we work with Boston Scientific, who has the interventional equipment. Procedure goes great, great outcome, the patient's ready to leave, there's more blood testing done, we're there all along the way, and then for their post-procedure follow-up. So already, if you think it's just that one patient, we're there a lot of steps along the way. And I don't think those in the industry realize you're so insinuated yeah. 
into right. that continuum yeah. of care. And it's really, and we're getting more and more focused on the patient pathway, and that's what we're doing with these institutions like Missouri and MUSC, and hopefully a, a lot more down the road. We're really focused on patient pathways and how we can help. Just think, we're touching them already so many different ways. Some of our audience may not know this, but uh, you had a career before MedTech. Uh, <laughs> That's why I'm wearing sneakers, I'm all beat up. <laughs> you were a professional football player. Yeah, you know, I had a, a, a brief stint down in Miami. Uh, I, I played for Villanova University and not a big school. I actually started out at Duke and I transferred to Villanova and uh, ended up having a pretty good football career. Uh, I'm, I was, I'm in the Hall of Fame at Villanova. I'm uh, very proud of that. Had a great group of guys I played with and uh, had an opportunity down with the Dolphins, but I got beat up and uh, what as position? My, uh, offensive guard. Uh, I'd like to say a quarterback, but I think the <laughs> audience, uh, they wouldn't be fooled. And, uh, you know, my parents said, I got to go to work. <laughs> so I had to go to work. <laughs> and, you know, one of my first jobs, you know, I had one or two, uh, you know, startup jobs. And one of my first jobs really was uh, working for IVAC, which was a part of Eli Lilly. And that was the whole connectivity to Guidant, which was a spin out of uh, of Eli Lilly, and I have to just say one thing. Some of the leaders at Guidant were just amazing people. You know, uh, Ginger, Ginger Graham, and, and Ron Downs, and Guido Niels, and, and there's one name after another. Uh, Dana Mead, I mean, they're just great mentors to me and to a lot of us. And uh, one of my uh, you know, closest friends, uh, Sam Conaway, and I worked together there for many years, and we partner together now. He's at Boston Scientific, so what a great company to grow up in. Guidant was like, and you, you stopped by and said hello to Leon today, Hirsch. Yeah. Guidant and U.S. Surgical, I think, turned out some of the most amazing leaders yeah. from those early years. Yeah, it took me a while. I wasn't as fast as the rest of them, but I got, I got there eventually. You're and a football I, player. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I started out as a sales rep, and I'm very yeah. proud of that. I worked yeah. in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and it was the best experience ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what lessons did you carry over from being a ball player at Villanova, a pro athlete, what were those? What were those obvious lessons, or maybe not so obvious lessons, you brought over to, you know, run a billion-dollar organization today? Well, look. I mean, it all starts with the basics. I mean, uh, to be able to play sports, I always had this attitude of, you know, um, a little bit of trying to catch up, and uh, maybe not the always the best athlete, but working hard was the way to do it, and, and it, that still applies. Hard work, tenacity, never giving up. It may sound corny, but it's the truth. You know, it's absolutely the truth and, and never giving up. And I take those things very seriously. And then look, we like to work hard, we like to play hard. I take that from those days as well. Yeah. Um, it's really important. I mean, we, and today it seems, I'll tell you, I got a great group of people and we have a blast working together. We're making things happen. The team, I'm so proud of the team and uh, it's just a really cool place to be. Do you still try and outwork the youngins? I don't know if I can keep up with them anymore. I, I pretend like I am, but I think they know I can't. But I try. I try. <laughs> you and I talked a couple of weeks ago when I was congr congratulating you on at least the Corindus uh, sort of in motion, and you would uh, you, you, you hurt, hurt your foot. Yes, yes. But you hurt it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hurt it in physical therapy for something else. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's my life story. I love it. Yeah. I love it. A lot it. of injuries, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, listen, thanks for taking time. Oh, I know you're thank super you. it's been busy. awesome. Congratulations thank on all your you. success, and this has been great. A yeah. ton of energy yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so thank much. Thank you so much. Take care. Yeah. yeah.